my, there's no two Holy Spirits. There's... And that same Holy Spirit that led Simeon that night or that morning to the Christ has led you here tonight. Because you believe the promise of the Holy Spirit. And he's just as obligated to you as he was to Simeon. The same because he's God and he has to keep his word. Then I can see Simeon, he craved, he desired to see the Christ. He believed what the word of God had said to him, no matter what the critics said, he believed the word of God. There was a yearning in his heart to see the Christ and he believed he would. As David said, when the deep calleth to the deep. Many of you in here believe in divine healing. Do you? You believe in divine healing. The very reason that you believe in divine healing proves there is a divine healing. When we come to America, we found the American Indian. He was worshiping something, of the sun, the moon, and nature, because in him he's a human being, and he knows he had a maker, so there was something within his human heart called out to worship. It is to every mortal. You might worship your automobile, your job, your house or something. You'll worship something. So if there's any idol, take it out and let Jesus Christ have first place. Amen. Let him be first of all. Then the hunger deep, as David said, when the deep calleth to the deep at the noise of thy water spouts. Now, the deep calling to the deep, uh, for instance this, if there is a deep in here calling, there has to be a deep to respond to that call. Maybe I'll make myself clear as this. I'm a great lover of nature. And going into the woods, I watch the sunset. I hear the animals scream of the wild. My mother's a half Indian. So if there's something about it in my blood that I, I love nature. And when I hear the call from the wild, there's something that sets my soul afire. I can't help it. Here recently I was up in Colorado. And I was standing up on a mountain, and I was watching an old mother eagle as she brought her little ones from the nest and on her wings and set them down in a grassy pasture. And then she flew back up to the top, very peak of the highest rock she could get to, and she sat down. She began to watch. Well, I was watching through my binoculars. My horse was hitched to a tree, and I was watching. And I said, Lord, I, I like this. And it seemed to me that I said, it smells, if you was ever around an eagle's nest, and they make it out of sharp sticks and things, and that poor little eagles were just walking on those uh, sticks and thorns. They never know nothing else. But one day, the mother spread forth her wings, and they stepped on the wings, and went out now. I looked at those little fellows, and they were just having a, a Pentecostal revival. <laughs> they were just running around on that soft grass, just picking here and chirping to one another and jumping over each other just as free as they could be. I thought, well, that's right. Now there is like a man in the old nest of the world, knows nothing but that what the devil can give him. But one day God picks him up and sets him down in the shady green pasture. Oh, how he rejoices. He's free. There's nothing, no harm. I thought, well, why aren't those little fellows afraid? Wonder if they realize there's coyotes around that would pick them up. But every once in a while, they would look up, and the old mother was sitting up there watching them. I thought, well, praise be to God. That's right. He taken me out of the nest of the world, and he climbed the ramparts of glory, sitting on high, watching over his heritage to see that no harm comes. I thought if a coyote would start towards one of those little eagles, she'd flog him to death. I thought, that's right, let Satan take after a believer, and he's got Jesus Christ on his hands, that's right. Let him take, after a while she was watching her great majestic head looking around, she was on the highest rock that she could find, because she could see everywhere, her sharp eagle eyes watching, and after a while I seen her raise her head through my ten power binoculars, I seen her raise her head and look around, she was whipping the air, and I thought, what is it, way back in the north, a northerner started, the thunder roared. She let out a scream and down through there she went, showed forth those big wings right out on that grassy prairie. And every one of those little eagles ran over real quick. They were instructed perhaps before leaving the nest. They caught their little feet right in the feathers. 
throws her little mouth down, little bill, hooked it around a feather, and she raised with that bunch of eagles on her wings and went just as straight, piercing that wind, blowing nearly 50 miles an hour then, right into the cleft of the rock. I cried like a baby. I thought, some glorious day, when this revival is over, he'll come from glory, spread forth his great wings of power, and the little eagles will hook their bills into there and fly away into glory with him. Deep calling to the deep. If the deep's calling, there's a deep to respond. In other words, before there was a tree to grow on the earth, there had to be an earth to grow in first. God never made the tree for the earth. He made the earth for the tree. He made the earth and commanded the earth to bring forth the tree, and the earth was a calling till the tree come forth. Before there was a fin on a fish's back, there was no water for him to swim in. The reason he's got a fin is because there was water for him to swim in to use it. Everything that we have is for our purpose and for our cause. Here some time ago, I was reading where a little boy eat the racers off of pencils. He eat all the rubber he could find. He even eat the pedal off of a bicycle. And they didn't know what was wrong with the little lad. So they took him down for an examination to the doctor at the clinic. And after examining, they found out his little body needed sulfur. And sulfur is in rubber. And he was eating the rubber to get the sulfur. Now, here it is. Get it. There had, if there was something inside here calling for sulfur, there had to be a sulfur to respond to it before it could call. See what I mean? Now, before there, when the deep calls to the deep, before there can be a deep call, there has to be a deep to respond to it. And then as sure as you people a few years ago who probably were sinners, maybe you were in some formal church that did not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you heard the message. There was something in there called out for more of God. You might have been living in a justified state before God, but you wanted the baptism of the Spirit. And you hungered for it. Now the very reason that there is the Holy Spirit is because you were hungering for it. You had never hungered for it unless there was something in here to call for it out there. See what I mean? And then the very reason that you're here tonight, you believe in divine healing. And if there was even taught in the Bible, if you group of people believed in divine healing, there'd have to be a fountain open somewhere or you'd never have the desire for it. If you've got the desire to be healed by God, there's a God to heal you. That's right. For the deep calls to the deep. That's the way it was with Simeon. He knew that there was coming a Christ and he knew that God promised him that he would see him before he died. Now, notice... Then as Simeon was led, isn't it strange, just when Jesus came on the scene, Simeon was led by the Holy Spirit right to Christ, by the Holy Spirit who gave the promise, and the Holy Spirit who gave the promise of divine healing has led you here tonight right to the fountain where it's open tonight for whosoever will, right now, right in the same Holy Spirit leading, leading sons of God who believe the promise of God. You see what I mean? Every one of you sons and daughters of God is led here because you believe God's promise. Oh, when I think of it, then I think way over in the corner was an old woman. We were taught that she was blind. Her name was Anna. She was a prophetess waiting for the coming of the Lord. God's under obligation to show her the Christ. And the Holy Spirit moved upon Anne. And I can see that old blind prophetess that morning coming along through that building, blind, led by the Holy Spirit, moving along, but all along those people come down along that line of women and stop right in front of the fountain for she was led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, he's here tonight. He is risen from the dead. He's given you the promise. The Holy Spirit's drawn you together. If you wasn't here tonight, if the Holy Spirit hadn't brought you here, you'd be out somewhere in the world. But you're sitting here in this hot building fanning because why? You're expecting to see Jesus Christ come on the scene and confirm his word. Expectation. If you expect to come just to find something to criticize, the devil will sure show you plenty to criticize. You certainly will. You get what you expect. Some of them say, well, now, if, I, yeah, if I don't get up in a prayer line, if I see something like this, then I'll believe. You'll get what you expect. 
I'm expecting tonight to see the Holy Spirit come and manifest Himself in power, pour out His glory up in this building here. Many receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sinners weep they were to Calvary. Sick be healed. All manners of signs and wonders because Jesus Christ has promised it. And I believe His promise. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, as thy word is truth, confirm thy word with signs and wonders of the resurrected Jesus. We know that when he was on earth, he didn't claim to be a great person. He only claimed that you showed him visions what to do. He knew the thoughts of the people, their conditions. He knew when the woman had a blood issue had touched his garment. She was standing out there and she seen she could not be hid for Jesus was looking right at her. He knew. He said, thy faith has saved thee. And Father, we know that he is here tonight because he promised to be. And our confidence is anchored in him, in his word. We're sure we have seen him in the manifestation of his great resurrection here on earth, working among his people in his church. And Lord, let us be today the light givers of this age, that when the great drama is set at the end of the road, and each one of us comes up before you, and the great screen is pulled out, and our lives of this generation is brought back before us, God, let me hear my voice screaming against unrighteousness and calling to people to believe on Jesus, thy Son. Bless the people here tonight. There's so many intense heat. And I pray, God, that you will give them a special blessing. May the soothing powers of the Holy Spirit take away all the thoughts of this. And Lord, sanctify thy servant just now for the service coming on, standing here realizing that eyes will be turned this way. And I pray, Father, in humility that you will let your great, glorious power be known to everyone. And if thy unworthy servant has found grace in thy sight for tonight, may you take this unworthy person, move the being out, and come in, Lord Jesus, and speak to your people. And when life is all over here on earth, the last prayer has been prayed, the battles are all done, the smoke's dried up, gone away, arms are stacked, the Bible's closed, And we come up to your house. That great morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky, as the poet said. Lord, as we see that great table stretched out there for that supper, thousands of miles long, looking across the table to each other, battle-scarred veterans, Tears of joy running down our cheeks. The king come out in his beauty, holiness, walk down along the table and take his own hands and wipe the tears from her eyes, saying, don't cry anymore, it's all over. Enter into the joys of the Lord. The toil of the road will seem nothing then, Father, when we get to the end of the way. And help us tonight, Lord, to forgetting those things which are in the past, Let us press the mark of the high calling now. And may your spirit come and manifest your son, Jesus Christ, to these people as I have tried as a mortal to tell them of you being the same yesterday, today, and forever. For we ask that in Jesus' name, thy beloved child, amen. The Lord bless you. And tonight, just before the healing services, Excuse me for being a baby, but there's something gets in my heart when I talk about him. I remember when I was first called by my ministers when they seen since the little baby visions had come, they said, Billy, don't you never go to that. So that's the devil. Being taught that the clergyman, I halfway believed that the visions would be of the wrong. Then when he come to me that night and told me who he was, oh my. And I know that he's here right now. 
and I know his presence, and I know I love him. I thought, how could I be a devil and love the Lord Jesus the way I do? How, how can my heart bleed for him? And he knows, knows my heart. And he came and told me different. I believe him because it compares with God's word, and their word does not compare with God's word. For we're living in this day. And now, Christian friend, I want to say to you all, because when it strikes me sometimes, you might wonder what happens. I, I can't explain it. It's beyond me explaining. But I get so weak that I can't hardly stand after maybe one or two people that I meet. You might not understand that, but just read the scripture. It declares it. I believe the prophet Daniel had saw a vision. He said he was troubled at his head for many days. Is that right? right. And Jesus, one time when the woman with enough faith to pull him around to see who she was, he said, I perceive that virtue, strength, has gone out of me. And people right out there, when it's not me, Christian. No, I am, I'm just a man, chief of sinners. But one born out of season to you full gospel people. That's right. By grace, by God's grace, he lets me call you my brother and sister. And I, I love you. And I, I'm not here tonight to be seen or heard. I'm not here because of finance, uh, that I, you know that. So I'm here for one thing, because I love Jesus, and I love you, and I believe that the coming by this invitation, maybe I could submit myself to him, and he would do something through me that would make you love him more, and believe him, and be healed. That's my, the only alternative I have of being here. God bless you. God bless you, pastors again, and businessmen. And I say to you now, before it gets to the week, sometimes I can't leave the platform. My boy and manager and them watches that. And I want to say goodbye to you. God bless you. And if I never meet you again this side of the great river, I will see you in the morning. Or the, and I'll have the testimony that I have now. I love the Lord Jesus. And the visions, God gives me visions that is true, the Bible before me, and God who is my witness. And those... And I can only uh, declare and say as he would let me by his grace do. So pray for me. And one more thing I'd like to ask. I'm going to Africa, India, Palestine, Germany. And remember in those lands like it was before. Don't think that witch doctors and all those different demon-possessed people are challenging you right on the ground. And you better know what you're speaking of. That's right. And when the winds are blowing hot and heavy, yeah. and persecution is on, can I remember in Washington, D.C., that somebody's praying for me? Will you promise me that? If you will, raise it. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you much. Now, I think last evening they gave out a hundred prayer cards last night. And I believe that number was, or that letter was Y. And I believe I called the first 15 of them last night. I think that is right, isn't it, brethren? Right. The fi first 15 of those cards that was given out. Now, we'll call s some more of them. And maybe tonight, if faith is coming high, maybe we can get two or three groups of them. And if not, I ask every person here, how many people in here that doesn't have a prayer card and would want to be healed by God tonight? Just raise your hand. Doesn't have a prayer card. Well, it's just... You can hardly tell it's just solid everywhere. I'm going to ask you something. This may be my first time of ever meeting you. It's too bad that we can't stay a little longer in a meeting and you know how to accept divine healing. Divine, many times when people are healed, a growth is a, is a demon. Every sickness is of the devil. God would go put sickness on his children. The devil does that. And if Satan casts out Satan, you say, well, the devil heals too. Well, Jesus said he couldn't. He said, if Satan casts out Satan, his kingdom is divided. So he can't. Only God can heal. Medicine doctors do not claim to heal. Mayo Brothers is one of our best authorities. They said, we don't claim to heal. Said, we only claim to assist nature. There's only one healer, that's God. They can sew a place up in your hand, but they can't heal it. They can only sew it up. A dentist can pull a tooth, but who's going to heal the place? But a doctor can take appendix out, but who's going to heal the place he cut? God does. Medicine doesn't build tissue. Medicine is only an aid to God is the healer. Right. A doctor can set your arm, but when he comes to set your arm and you don't go out and you're not well, the doctor does his part, what he's taught to do and knowledge to do. He sets your arm, but he leaves it for God to heal. That's right. All healing is of God. Hallelujah. 
So now you just believe him, and sometimes when those growths, the life go out of them as a demon, well then those growths die. If the life went out of you, of course you would die. Your life would go from you, but the body's still there. It shrinks. If there's an undertaker here, knows that the human body, any, body, any uh, flesh shrinks when the life is gone. Watch a little animal when it's, when it's uh, killed on the road. It'll weigh, or some of you hunters here, if you kill an animal, beef or butcher, and you lay it on the scale and weigh it now, just kill it and weigh it, and in the morning weigh it again, see how many pounds lighter it is. Then let it lay there for two or three days, then see how many pounds heavier it is. When well, a growth, when it dies, the demon goes out of the growth, like tumor, cancer, cataract, so forth. When the demon goes out of it, which is a life, every person here come from one little germ, and, and you begin to develop cells, and those cells uh, come into after the nature of the life that was in it, which made man, the cell from the dog makes the dog, the bird the bird, ever after its nature, ever kind. But now a demon, which is a growth, or it doesn't have to come in growth, it um, starts developing cells, say for instance cancer. It starts to developing cells and becomes larger, larger. Well now it's got a life, and it's a living, just the same as you was living and developing in the womb of your mother. The same thing you're developing. But now that life isn't your life, it's a different life. You've got life to live, and that's a life of death, or a spirit of death rather, pardon me. And it's death. Now, it doesn't belong in you. It wasn't in there before, but it's there now. Well, then who put that in there? It only has to come from one thing. That's the devil. And it's a germ. Cancer, tumor, any of those things come from a germ. And you come from a germ, too. See? So when that dies, for instance, like cataracts, the person's got cataracts when the spirit leaves. The people say, oh, I can see. I can see. And the next day, they can see much better. Well, then about after about 72 hours, corruption sets in, like the resurrection of Jesus. Now, the cells didn't corrupt. He raised before the three days and nights, of course. You see, he died on Friday afternoon, raised Sunday morning. Because David said, I'll not leave his soul in hell, neither will I suffer my holy one to see corruption. Those cells begin to break in 72 hours. And, uh, but, and then when the patient, when that begins to swell, that growth, getting bigger, they'll, of course, your heart has to purify the bloodstream. A lady came to me last night, a very saintly, godly-looking woman with a big cancer that uh, she said she'd come in the line and said it was all covered over her hair and said I stood and looked at her and told her under the spirit she had cancer in her head but said it was going to come off and it come off and she's got it here I guess tonight here in a bottle of alcohol right here now. We've had thousands of them. Is the woman in the building, would you stand up? If the woman's anywhere in the building with that cancer in the alcohol, if she's anywhere in the building, if she's standing up, wave your hand or something so someone would see you. Uh, uh, yeah. There's the lady standing there with the cancer. And um, I've seen him stand right on the platform, just turn white and drop right off on the platform. See? Now, that's a miracle. Usually, when the little growth is dead, the life goes out of it, but the growth, if it can't drop off, it's on the inside. And if it does, of course, it'll lay there for a few days and begin to swell up like any other flesh. The cells will begin to break. Then you get real sick with a fever. Of course, it's an infection like the heart pumps the blood and purifies the body, there's a big lump of flesh laying loose in your body. The patient gets violently sick. Then they say, oh, I felt so good when on the platform and for a day or two, but I guess I've lost my healing. Why, brother, sister, that's the best sign in the world you've got your healing. See? And then you start disbelieving, and just as sure as your faith taking the life away, your unbelief will bring it back again. It will. It'll resurrect it. Remember, Jesus said when the unclean spirit's gone out of a man, he walks in dry places. Then he returns with seven other spirits. Is that right? And the, so let the good man of the house faith be there. No matter how you feel, it ain't what you feel, it's what you believe. Amen. Jesus never did say, did you feel it? He said, did you believe it? <laughs> that was, God bless you. All right. Now let's see, I believe that was 100 prayer cards they gave out last night and why. We never got to all of them. Let's take the last 15 of them tonight to try. Who has prayer card 80, uh, be, oh, 85? Who has prayer card 85? Would you raise your hand if somebody here somewhere in the prayer card 85 all right 86 who has prayer card 86 all right 87 87 do i see someone with prayer card 87 please if you would you stand up uh, 80 or 87 is what see somebody maybe can't get up maybe they're on a stretcher maybe they're deaf and and they say well no one help me and i, I get the back five of it in my office <laughs> 
They say, well, I was there, and, and you just said uh, from so-and-so to so-and-so, and nobody helped me, and maybe they was dead. Now, look, we got 85, 86, 87. Look on your neighbor's card and see. He may be deaf. He can hear. 87? Thank you, sister. 88. Who has 88? Prayer card 88. Is it in the building? 88. All right. 89? Is a prayer card 89? Can you get up? Uh, 89? Is it hand up for 89? Or 89? All right, 90, 90, now with everyone in here, if you'll just do now what he says do, and no matter what he says do, you do it, just do it, just, just you go do just what it says do, now I'm your brother and just a man, now if he will come and, and take uh, this poor frame and blessed enough to let his Holy Spirit work through it, then you'll see Jesus Christ moving in the audience. And now, no matter how much he would vindicate himself here, if you don't believe him, he can't do nothing for you. Is that right? Yes. No matter if he's standing right here by my side, visibly as you could see. Well, if you didn't believe me, I couldn't do nothing for you. But my, my words will be just what he has said out of his scripture, and I'll pray with all my heart that God will help you. Because there'll be probably mothers and dads and so forth in here that, that's sick and afflicted and needy. And I'll ask God to help you the best of my knowledge. All right, line up over here on the right. Now, let's all bow our heads just a moment. Kind Father, we pray in the name of thy Son, Jesus. May the Holy Spirit come now and manifest the works of Jesus Christ. Bless these people everywhere and make them to be whole, make them well, make them healthy, happy. And now, in order to do this, Father, thou knowest the frailness and uh, thy, of thy servant. And I, I don't know what to say or what to do. And now I have did this all at thy command. And I believe that you will be here tonight to bless and to help these people. And Father, if you just let the Holy Spirit come to your servant, and reveal these things to us, what we should do and how we should do them, then we will all be happy and rejoice. And this audience will believe on you with one heart and a heart. And Father, I ask you this as your servant. Let not one feeble person leave this building tonight. May they everyone go well and healthy and rejoice. Do it, will you, Father? I pray with grace in my heart and faith in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, many times, yeah, is there someone on those lights, someone at the lights that can move them? Now, sometimes this Holy Spirit, it comes, and many of you have seen the picture. If I ever come again, I'll bring you some of them, as the Brother Moore was telling tonight. It's been taken several times, and in the books, I guess you all got them. We, I only had two boxes, so I uh, hope you enjoy them real well. And now, they, you look in there and you'll see another picture of it where it's settled down and a newspaper photographer caught that one in Camden, Arkansas. But it wasn't authentic like this American Association. And they, they got it and it was, then it became authentic. So we, and many thousands of people, I was standing on the river here some time ago baptizing 500 after a revival and it come right down where I was standing and people fainted and uh, just there where it was. And it was just like a roar, noise, a whipping fire. I pray that God will come visible before the audience tonight in that manner here. At the Capitol once more, if I can find favor with God. Now, you realize, it could come to some eyes and wouldn't to others. We don't want to think that, but it does. John was the one who bare record seeing the Spirit of God over Jesus. Is that right? Never said the audience. And the, the wise man followed a star. Do you believe that? And it passed over every observatory in the land, always in the Orient. Weeks and months are coming. And they kept time to the stars. They watched all night long. They kept time. And no one ever saw it. But the wise men did. For they were looking for it. You'd be looking for Christ tonight. You'll see him. The Lord Jesus bless you. All right. Um, Billy, Paul, Brother Moore, some of you, is, uh, ever, is ready. All right. is, they got the whole line lined up, Billy, the whole 15. All 15 lined up. Now to the rest of you, try the ones that hasn't got a prayer card and know you won't be in the line. I want you to look this way and just believe. 
And you believe with the same kind of faith that that woman had touched his garment. And he turned and said, Thy faith has saved thee. Do you believe he's the same tonight? Do you believe in all that howling mob, that poor little old blind man sitting down by the walls of Jericho, probably twice the distance of this building, a scream and a holler and have mercy on me? Jesus perhaps never heard his call. But he felt his faith. That moved. And all that bunch of critics. And he turned and said, Thy faith has saved thee. He turned into the audience and said differently, Why reason ye in your heart? And said to the woman at the well, Go get your husband. And he said, I can do nothing except the Father shows me. I want to ask you something. If what I have said is the truth, if it is the truth, then God's obligated to his word. Not to me, but to his word. Is that right? He's obligated to his word. And then he will bring that to pass just exactly the way he said he would do it. And if he does do it, will all of you then in here, if you haven't received Jesus Christ, would you be willing to do it? And you that you're that can see his mercy to others, yeah, he will have mercy to you if you'll just have faith and believe. Just pray and say, Lord, I, I'm a believer and I want you to heal me tonight. And God will do it. We have just left Africa recently where I'm to return again in the next few weeks. Africa, India, Palestine, Germany, and the ministry. And at Durban, South Africa, after about three or four people had passed through the prayer line and they seen the power of the Holy Spirit moving in the people and seen what God was doing, 30,000 accepted Jesus as personal Savior in one altar call. 30,000 at one time. So I believe if we'll take God's word as the rule and go into all the world and preach the gospel, the gospel came not in word only, but through power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. So the, the gospel is demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit. I went into nations that say, now we don't want missionaries. We know more about it than you do. But the thing we want to see is somebody that's got faith enough to make God's word manifest. That's what they want to see. And that's how they get converted. That's how they find Christ, is because they... They believe in that manner. And I trust the God with all my heart that there will be many, many here tonight who will find Christ the same to their heart. May the Lord Jesus of Nazareth bless each and every one of you is my prayer. Now, okay? No man seeks God at any time. God seeks man. Never did a man seek God in all the world. God seeking man. When man first fell in the Garden of Eden, it showed the strain of man. Man hid. God was hunting man. Jesus said, no man can come to me except my Father draws him. It has to be drawn of the Father first. And then I would like to explain something to you. Uh, seeing a vision, how many people in here ever dreamed a dream? Let's see your hand. Well, I guess two-thirds of you. There is true that many people doesn't dream. That's your subconscious, we're taught. Here's your first conscience. Here's your subconscious. Now, this subconscious is what I'm trying uh, with the Holy Spirit to work on. This first conscience, I might ask this man here, any man along here, someone, do you believe? Oh, yes, sir. You believe it here, or what about this man down here? He's the one that runs the ship, not the man up in the pilot house. It's the man in the engine room. Sometimes when you go to sleep, you go into this subconscious and you dream. And you dream of things you did when you were here. Then when you wake up, you remember things that you dream. You people had dreamed dreams many years ago. You dreamed them. You still remember. Well, there was some part of you somewhere. Isn't that right? Or you wouldn't remember. Yeah. Something that you dreamed many years ago. Now the man who sleeps sound, his subconscious is way back. It never gets to him. But a seer, his subconscious is not back there. Neither is it here. It's right here. He doesn't go to sleep. He's got his eyes open, and he just sees. Now that, God gave that man a place where he could sleep sound and not dream. God gave man the way to dream dreams. I'd say, dream me a dream. You couldn't do it. 
Then God puts in the church some apostles, prophets, gifts of healing. Is that right? They're all for the perfecting of the church. Paul said if, there come, if you all speak with tongues and the unlearned comes in, won't he say you're all mad? But if one prophesies and reveals the secrets of the heart, won't they fall down and say truly God is with you? Is that right? Yeah. Is that the gospel? Yes. Well, wasn't that Jesus Christ yesterday? Yeah. Isn't he today? Yeah. You can yes. believe him by speaking with tongues. Yeah. You can believe him by the Holy Spirit. But I believe him in the full measure that he is. The same Lord Jesus. He's not dead. He rose from the dead. And here tonight, here at the platform now. And may he bless and help. I've never been in this country before. And as far as I know, there's not a living soul that I can see before me that I know. Very few here on the platform. Brother Bose, I remember him. I've seen the man there next to him. I don't remember his name, but... And I... Brother Lindsay, just a, maybe three or four ministers sitting here that I know in the building. But God knows all of you. Is that true? He knows all of you. Now, this lady standing here, God in heaven knows. I've never seen her in my life as I know of. Are we strangers, lady? Yes. We are perfect strangers. But God knows her. Now, if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, let's change the picture now, what he was yesterday, when he was going to find out something about a woman. He said, bring me a drink. She said, why, it's not customary for this to happen, Jews and so forth with the Samaritans. But Jesus, speaking to her a little while, he found just where her trouble was. Is that right? Yes. Well, now, Jesus has risen from the dead, now, as living in us tonight, a little while, the world sees me no more, yet you shall see me, for I, I as a personal pronoun, I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Now, that's the gospel truth. You might not have read it that way, or thought of it that way, but that's the way it's written in the Bible. That's, your theology might have bypassed it somewhere, but that's the way it's written in the Bible. I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Now, I, you know I'm waiting for something. That is true. It's the angel of the law. <laughs> That's true. I'm just as helpless as it could be, just like any of the rest of you. And I'm here, perhaps, with critics sitting here. How many ever seen his picture? I've noted my meetings and seen where the scientific taken his picture. Uh, the great light. It comes in. You can watch it. Yes, many of you. It's all thousands of copies of it. It's been sold and so forth. The Douglas Studios in Houston, Texas has it where George J. Lacey, the, one of the best in the research in America, taking an exam and everything to see it wasn't a double exposure or something. And Jesus Christ has vindicated himself as being the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, of course, I wait for him. Whether he will help me tonight, I do not know. And if I have said anything boastfully or anything that I've said out of the way, may God forgive me. I wouldn't mean to do it. I only mean with humbleness of heart to represent Jesus Christ, who's listening to me now. And may his mercy be here tonight. Be enough to spoke these things, and that being his word, may he come and help us is my prayer. And now, as the organ is here somewhere, if she will slowly, please, real low, the song Only Believe. And everybody, please be in a, a mood of prayer, if you will. You don't have to bow your head, but you're asked. Now in the prayer line, you that's coming, what be, if he rebukes you, you must, if it's, it'll be the truth. If it is, you must be willing to stand it. In the audience anywhere, if he says, you must know it's not me, it's him. And go make it right. The first thing you can do before you can find a cure, you've got to find the cause before you can find a cure. You go to a doctor, sick and upset, and he gives you an aspirin, he's not a good doctor. He's trying to get rid of you. If he's a good doctor, he'll diagnose the case till he finds the trouble and then start working from there. That's the same thing we have to do here. If an evil spirit, if there's unconfessed sin or something, or some out of the will of God, you can anoint them all night long and cry and scream and do all you wish to, that demon will stay right there. That's right. He has a right to. But that's what you have to watch. God has put a curse on somebody for something, then you come along and take it off. You get in trouble like Moses did. That's right. He's here. The Holy Spirit. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I take every person in here under my control for God's glory. <laughs> now, I want to talk to you a minute, sister. You're conscious that something's going on, of course. It, it's, it's just now happened. 
Now, if that is true, let the people see by your uplifted hand. That's right, see. If that's that, his presence, yes. that's right, see. Now, I, I'm a stranger to you, never seeing you in my life. Now, if the Holy Spirit that I have spoke of, of Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, if I have truly witnessed that to the people and declared it to be the truth, and he is the same, then he will reveal to me something to you that would help you to believe him. If you're here, I don't know what you have need of, whether it's, uh, but he does. Now, if God will permit that, would you accept your healing and, or, or whatever it is you want finance or whatever it is you're here to seek him for, to ask him about, or domestic troubles, whatever it might be, whatever it is, he'll know and he'll be able to let me know. Is that right? Right. And that would make him the same as he talked to the woman at the well. Yes. Now, I'm only talking to you like he did to contact your spirit, and I see you moving from him. You're, you're, you've had a, I see a great crash of some sort. Yes. It's an accident. Yes, yes, And you, yes. it was a car uh, wreck. Yes. And you were thrown in the air yes. like that. Yes. And it strained you in somewhere in your neck and it's caused a, a cancer yes. to come into your neck. Uh, or, and you're some sort of a teach in the scripture. And you yes. believe that Jesus Christ makes you well? I do. Father God... In the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, on the authority of God's word by a dying woman, I ask this evil thing to leave her. Satan, you are exposed. So come out of the woman as the church of the living God calls for you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank now, Sister, just a moment. I just want to talk to you. Of course, you know it's gone now. Oh, yes. It'll stay that way. See how your throat left? Oh, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's all gone from her. The, the garter has left her throat. And she, God bless you. Go on your road now and be thankful. Happy and rejoice. And, and be, uh, now, just have faith in the Lord Jesus. Make him in your center of your thought right now. The Lord Jesus. As you think on these things. While they were thinking on these things, they were in one accord. Remember, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same today. Now have faith. Watch this way, audience, and believe with all your heart and give me your undivided attention. Be in prayer. Keep faith in God. Now, I believe this is the lady. Is this the patient? Yes. All right, come near, sister. Of course, that won't hurt you now. That's, that's just his presence see, that you're conscious of. And I'd, an audience, I'm, I'm your brother. I, this is not psychology. I felt that come into the audience. It isn't. It's Almighty God. Yes. See, see. It's not psychology. No, it isn't. Now, don't do that. Just think of being the Lord Jesus, see, and one accord. Now, sister, I just want to speak with you just a moment. We're strangers, I suppose. But Jesus Christ knows the both of us. And this is our first time meeting on earth. But he knows you, and he's fed you all your life. And he knows me. And if I, your brother, and by his grace, by a divine gift, that I had nothing to do with it coming, when I was born a little baby, the first thing I can remember was the vision. Now, I want you to look this way just a moment. Of course, you're sick. And you're suffering with uh, a condition that's a, it's a dark spirit around you. It's death. And it's in a form of cancer. And the cancer is located on the breast. And you're seeing you're examined by someone strong and it's a, you got a, a ruptured condition. And the rupture is in the bowels. And you have a stomach trouble also. A severe heart trouble that caused you fainting. Uh, uh, here a few days ago, you're sitting sideways on the side of a bed and nearly passed out looking towards your window. 
Are those things the truth? Yes, it's that all was true. All true. Well, whatever it was, of course, it's gone from me. But what do you think that was that knows your life? Was it Jesus Christ? You accept it to be that? Yes. Thank you. And I You're that. willing, you know that something supernatural is here. Yes. And if you believe it to be the Lord Jesus, as I have preached it out of the word, and you believe it to be the Lord Jesus. Yes, I do. Yes, I, I know there's a dark spirit of fear hanging at you yet. It's something very serious. Yes. Say, I see you. Your name is uh, Eva. Yes. And your last name is York, yes. and you live in this city, yes, and your house number is 613 6th Street. Yes. Is that right? Yes. You're going home to be well. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, you may you go and be made well. God bless you. Just go rejoice in heaven. I just have faith. Don't doubt. The scripture has said, go ye and sin no more, unless a worse thing come upon you. Sin is unbelief. Sin is not drinking, smoking, gambling. That's attributes of sin. You do that because you believe not. Jesus said, go and sin or disbelieve no more, or worse things will come upon you. Have faith in God. Believe him with all your heart. I see the light following that woman yet. It's, uh, just uh, That's her just left. It's hanging by a colored person there. Yes, the lady there with that gallbladder and rupture. You believe the Lord Jesus make you well, lady? Sitting there with that white thing around your neck, if you believe it with all your heart, you may raise up and claim your healing and be made well in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Have faith in God. Does thou believe? You have a rupture, don't you, sir, sitting out there. Isn't that right? You were sitting there praying, Lord, have that man speak to me. Is that right? If that's right, raise up your hand. Stand up on your feet. Your faith has sealed you, brother. Go home. Jesus Christ makes you well. The same Lord Jesus. You don't need to be up here. You need to have faith. Just believe God with all your heart, and you shall have what you ask for. Jesus Christ will grant it to you if... You will only believe, but you must have faith. You must believe him with all your heart, and God will bring it to pass. The patient, excuse me, sir. Do you believe with all your heart? You do? Now, you're just a bit excited because of the presence of his being standing here. And... Um, I believe you're from out of town. You come from a capital too, Richmond, yep. Virginia. You have a cancer. It's in your inside of your mouth on your jaw. Is that right? You want to go home and be well? That's right. Accept Jesus as your healer. And in the name of Jesus Christ, may it leave the man. Go away from him. God bless you, sir. Go believing, having faith with all. What do you say? I know now that seeing you, you're becoming a young-looking person, much younger than what you are in my presence. You are suffering with some sort of a headache, and it's, um, it's come many years ago, about 25 years ago, your headache started, and it's been bothering you ever since. You have been a great believer, and you have, uh, you have prayed for this hour that's standing here now. You have said in prayer to God that if you could uh, only get to me, that uh, if I would pray that your headaches would cease. Those things true? Everything. That is true. Now, you heard what said that. That wasn't me. That was just my voice. Was those ever what it was? Is something I, I remember seeing a young person or something. Was it this way it was said there? Just the way, just the way it was said. 
Now, you believe that God did it? You believe God did it? Now, you're sure that God is here? Just a moment. I see something else. A young woman seems to be standing near you. It's a, it's a daughter. And, um, yes, you were just fixing to go on a trip somewhere. You were going to see her. And she's from Indiana. Richmond, Indiana is where she lives. And she, her husband is a minister. And she has wrote you a letter, something telling you not to come because I was coming here. Is that right? You're healed. You can go on. God bless you. Now only believe, have faith in God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And now, just have faith and believe. God bless you, dear colored people, shouting. He's, he is always ready to help and to believe, to help the people in need. Just a moment, the lady. Now I see the Holy Spirit standing in the corner. It's uh, over a colored lady. She's looking this way. She has been and she's praying. She has a growth. And that growth is in her throat. She's got her hand up. You accept your healing lady? The lady's sitting right behind you there. Also, she has a growth and it's in her shoulder. Is that right, lady? Both of you stand on your feet right now. The two ladies right there with the growth on the two colored ladies. Jesus Christ. Healed you both, you can go home and be made well for God's glory. Your faith has healed you. God bless you. Let's go. Have faith in God. Do not disbelieve, but believe that all things are possible to them that does believe. Amen. My, what a faith bank in the building. It looks like real milky out over the building. You are certainly in the spirit of the Lord now. Anything could happen. How do you do, lady? Do you believe me to be God's prophet? It's, I mean, well, a prophet is a preacher. You don't expect me to be of the enemy. You expect me to be of God. Is that the way you accept it? Well, then I can help you. For he told me if I would get the people to believe me and be sincere when I prayed, that nothing would stand before the prayer. And now it isn't the I that helps, it's God that does the healing. I questioned, I said, they won't believe me. He said, there'll be two signs given to you, as was to the prophet Moses. In this the people will believe. And one of them was to reveal the secrets of the hearts of the people to them. Now, you're not here for yourself, although you're nervous and run down, but it's been caused by a disease of this child. This child here is suffering. It's been turned down by the doctors to die. It's leukemia. Isn't that right? You brought the child from out of town. You've traveled, coming from the west, coming east, you have come. You've come from a, a state that has mountains. It's Pennsylvania. And your city, I believe it's Chambersburg, isn't that right? Bring the child to me. Little sister, dear, the Lord Jesus was here. He'd lay his hands up on you, and death would leave you, and you'd live. Do you believe that I am his servant? Then in his stead, I lay my hands on this child and bless it, and ask that the demon leaves the child and that life comes to the child and it will live and be well. Come out of the child, Satan, by the authority of God's Bible with a divine gift ministered by an angel, I adjure thee to leave the child. Come from me. You need your to get well. God bless you. Turn around, wave to the audience. God bless you, the little girl with tremendous faith. Be well. God bless you, honey. Go, you write me a letter. Do you believe me as his prophet, as his servant? Do you believe that God is near in his spirit and this which is now being done is of the Lord Jesus? Not me. I'm a man. Yeah. 
If God will let me know what's wrong with you as a vindication that I am his prophet standing here revealing the truth, as he said to the woman, go get your husband. She said, I have none. He said, you have five. She said, I see your prophet. See, I perceive that you're a prophet. Now that same spirit that was on that son of God, he promised to send it back in the form of the Holy Ghost that would be with us and dwell with us to the end of the world. You believe it? If he can know your troubles now, can he? You got heart trouble. Is that right? Every person with heart trouble stand to your feet. You can be healed right now, no matter what it is, of the heart trouble. Lord God, thou knowest our strength and how feeble we are and how weak. But Lord, we know how strong you are. And heart trouble is something our doctors cannot do anything by. But Lord, who made the heart? You did. And I now rebuke this demon power that's holding these people with heart trouble. May he come out of every one of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, sister. I just want to say something to you. You feel different now than you felt in a long time, have you? I told the people, no, there's a real dark spirit. You had bad stuff when you lay down. That's right. And now it's gone from you. Right. You're healed. You, I just told you. Yeah. Yes, sir. You are. All right. Have faith in God, please. Everyone, with one accord, have faith. How do you do, sir? All right, us being strangers one to another, but the Lord Jesus knows us both. Is that right? God of heaven who created the heavens and earth dwelt in Jesus Christ promised to return again in us. And what he done, we'd do also. Do you believe me to be his prophet? The reason I say that, the angel of the Lord told me, get the people to believe you. And if they won't believe you, then you'll know the very secrets of their heart and they'll have to believe it then. But you do believe me. And besides the reason that you do believe me, you are a minister of the gospel yourself. And you're here for a good cause. You're not sick, you're in need, and you want an old-fashioned revival to break in your community. The Lord. That's what you're doing. Every one of us wants that. Let's all stand for an old-fashioned revival. Oh. Almighty God who created the heavens and earth, I ask now that ever demon power in this building will be broke, the power of Jesus Christ be made manifest, Lord, we, but we're not defeated. Satan, I adjure thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come out of the people. Stand up, you crippled people, out of the wheelchairs. Give him praise, everyone. Lift your hands and keep praising God. Whatever your needs are, receive it. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 